Hello there everyone and welcome to this Biology Mind A-level tutorial on protein formation. So our key learning objectives for today are to talk about our formation and breakdown of a peptide bond, to think about dipeptides and polypeptides, and third of all to think about the differences between amino acids. So let's start off by looking at the peptide bond. So peptide bonds are formed by condensation reactions. Now, you might have come across this already in maybe chemistry or maybe in biology already, but condensation reactions join amino acids together by forming these peptide bonds between them. Now, these reactions can either form dipeptides. So remember, di is sort of the Greek, derived from the Greek stem for two, so two peptides together, so this is a dipeptide, or polypeptides, poly for many. <clears throat> So many amino acids joined together form polypeptides. And note that each of them have this peptide bond in between them that is formed by a condensation reaction. So here we go, for example, two amino acids joined together by a peptide bond in a condensation reaction. So this is a condensation reaction. And condensation reactions mostly, not always, but for the sake of A-level biology, they mostly also produce a water molecule. So always remember that when two amino acids bond together and form that peptide bond via a condensation reaction, there's always going to be water formed as well. All right. So if we were to draw out the amino acid structure, so this is one amino acid and this is a second amino acid, and let's think about how we can form water. We know that we form water, so that kind of gives the clue away because we know water has the formula of H2O. So we have a look at these groups here between our amino acids. So <clears throat> remember, this is the carboxyl end or the C terminus, and this is the N terminus of our amino acid. And we're joining it together in this condensation reaction to form H2O, water. So essentially what we're doing is we are looking at this little bit here, and we're taking this away in the reaction to form H2O, leaving in its place a bond between this C and this N here having a nice bond there, a chemical bond that's formed by our condensation reaction. And that bond we call our peptide bond. All right. Okay. Now, the reverse of this, when we want to break apart peptide bonds and break apart proteins into their constituent amino acids, is known as hydrolysis. Now, you've probably guessed, if we want to reverse the process, all we probably do is add water to this, which is true. You can see that we're adding water, and this results in a hydrolysis reaction where the protein is split apart into its constituent amino acids. Now, the 20 common amino acids differ in only their R group, which we've discussed in the previous tutorial. So, for example, we know that this is our amino acid, this is our N-terminus or our amine group, this is our C-terminus or our carboxyl group, this is our hydrogen that's always there, and these three things always stay constant, and this is our R group. Or our variable group. And the simplest and the smallest amino acid is glycine because its R group is just a hydrogen atom. But you can see that different, so these are all the 20 common amino acids. And you can see if we find glycine again, that's over here. This is our hydrogen variable group. But you can see that it varies. So alanine has a CH3 variable group, for example. And you can see all the varying structures that are present as the variable group. All right, so that's lesson 13 completed for today. I hope that makes sense how we form these peptide bonds and by condensation reactions and break them up again by hydrolysis reactions. I'll see you for the next tutorial.